In this episode of my box barn build project, kind of wrestling with the fact that shipping containers, now, now shipping containers are cool. I like the shipping container, but it's kind of a, it's kind of an imperfect building material. Man, this thing has been patched on. There's something, there's something about the look of this skanked out container. Just this rusty, worn edifice. I mean, if you're into distressed stuff, this is the best. I just still want to have it be super heavy and kind of crazy, but at the same time, just a little bit elevated. And for the container curious, here's a look at one of the patches. This guy, it's got a bunch of patches, just like five, five or six of these on the container and pretty good welds, you know, utilitarian welds, not the stuff you see on Instagram with a beautiful bead, but it is definitely watertight, sealed all the way around. And another one right here, chunkier welds, you know, a little bit of bird poop dripping, but not too bad. And what they're doing with all these patches is taking the same steel, the same uh, pattern and just slapping it in place cutting a hole out of the damage section and welding it down. Now I absolutely and 100% prefer the corded grinder just more power batteries just ah, i hate it but i kind of ran over my extension cord with my lawnmower yesterday so i'm gonna see if i can do this whole thing with batteries just keep on charging them It's like one of those things you just you just didn't think you'd find yourself doing, you know, like washing down a shipping container, but I had kind of uh, imagined I'd be just kind of quickly spraying the container down, you know, but it's kind of been one of those days where what you imagine isn't exactly what goes down. So I grabbed a brush, it's a big brush, and uh, just hitting it with the coat. Not everywhere, but just in the main spots, like this kind of stuff. Something about a paintbrush, it just drills into your mind as you're using it. So that side's a little bit scrabbly, but then I fully painted this side and the front side. This is the side that faces the road and I'm just trying to keep it from looking totally nasty. I also did a little logo stamp preservation thing.
And this one's my favorite. It's kind of like the VIN number of the shipping container. When they're making these containers, one of the last things they do is rivet these things in place. This box is a 2006. My original container is 2005, so a year older, but just not ridden quite as hard. Well, what you gotta know about the design for this roof structure is that I am not putting the knee wall for the roof. I'm not putting it all the way over here on the edge where it's really strong. I'm putting it in just a little bit, foot and a couple inches. And these guys are squishy. So I definitely don't wanna load up my trampoline with any weight, but over here they are a lot less squishy. And not only are they squishy, but the dang things are like a little bit arched out. So it's going to be funky. It's going to be funky building this guy. But I mean, of course it's going to be funky. We also have like a little cave in here at the end that's attracting water. A surprise visit from the inspector. <laughs> <laughs> While orthodoxy suggests that we lay out such a knee wall on 16 inch centers, I'm actually doing this guy on 24s. 24s, bigger span. But I just like the idea of each vertical member being directly under those trusses, which are all 24 span trusses. It's a little bit off book or whatever, but I think it's gonna be more solid. Uh, this guy is beginning to find its home. It is currently not plumb, uh, not straight, and not level on top. So just got three strikes against it. I think we'll get it tuned up. Uh, problem number one with the wall, the fact that it wasn't actually straight, has more or less been rectified with a piece of string. Can you see that? You got a little string on there. So you can probably see that it's 
straight-ish or maybe even straight. I mean, I can't really see that perspective that you've got with the camera, but I think it's pretty good. So with it straight, I can do the bolts in the middle to at least keep this thing from flopping over. These bolts were leftovers. They're uh, like five inches too long. And I'm not going to town on these guys. They don't need to be super tight just yet because that wall up there isn't exactly plumb. So I'm just holding it, keeping that thing from blowing over. Just a sequence thing. Normally I would finish up this knee wall thing uh, before moving over to any shed action, but instead I'm gonna tie it all together because we're trying to solve some problems over here. We got it straight. It's not plumb and the top's not level. So this will be the kind of backwards way to plumb up this wall. guys are just scabbed on here just to keep stuff from wibble wobbling. So there are a lot of ways to build a building. Some are more original and inventive than others. Others are surely faster. But this one right here, this is just the way I'm doing it. I'd like to tell you that the next episode involves putting the roof on this thing, but 
There's always little details and hiccups and things that come up. There are a couple little fiddly blocks and things to put in here. I am working hurricane ties all the way up and down the sides. But honestly, I don't actually know. I'm not exactly following a plan on this one. I'm just gonna kind of enjoy this moment and then regroup and figure out what's next.